Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we honor a Good Friday today, especially the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his great love. We also welcome those who are watching online with us today. And last night we had our uh, Monday Thursday service. And then on Easter morning, we'll have 7 a.m. Uh, sunrise service out in the uh, parking area. And then we will have our 10 o'clock Easter cantata and celebration. So we hope you'll join us for those as well. Can we begin with our opening hymn? Let us stand. Were you there? Let us stand. may be seated. Our scripture readings, first one comes from Psalm 22, verses 1 through 5 and 14 through 31. Hear now the word of God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish, my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises, and you, our ancestors, put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of the earth, the dust of death. And dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. 
all my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and they cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Yes, rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. and the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship, all who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. And from our New Testament, from the Gospel of John, Verses 1 through 30. And then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. And then the Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from, he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have the power either to free you or to crucify you? And Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. And from then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out, and he sat down on the judge's seat at the place known as the stone pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. 
And so the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. And Pilate had notice, a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic and Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the King of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lots who will get it. And this happened, that the scripture might be fulfilled, that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. And near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we look at these scriptures, we began with Psalm 22. It's important because when Jesus is on the cross, he begins to recite this psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If we were to simply stop there, we would not know as the Jews around him knew the rest of the story. The psalm that said our ancestor, ancestors trusted you and you delivered them. You are trustworthy, God. You will not let the afflicted one be put to shame. Psalm 22, written some a thousand years ago, before this cross, this crucifixion, before Jesus hung there, King David was given a vision of what would happen to the Messiah. There are worlds here in collision. You see, the world of those priests, the high priest Caiaphas, even the priests that met together in Sanhedrin, knew this prophecy. They knew all the prophecies. They knew about Jeremiah and Isaiah. They knew the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. And yet, they still did not recognize him. Because he claimed that he was the son of God, 
they were prepared to have him killed. Jesus would go before Pilate for a trial. Jesus answered when Pilate asked, Who are you? Are you the king of the Jews? This is what Jesus answered. You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. You and I are invited to listen to his truth. Interestingly, when Pilate hears those words, he says, what is truth? You might imagine, even in our culture today, that people believe there are many different sides and stories. But with truth, there is only one story. Whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is holy, think upon these things. What worlds are colliding that day? Caiaphas, the high priest, the high priest who has a dungeon in his basement where he holds Jesus prior to the crucifixion. Can you imagine today any of our most prestigious religious leaders and authorities having a dungeon in their basement? A dungeon to say whatever contradicts our way of seeing God shall be silenced. What worlds are colliding? The high priest and his Sanhedrin, they want to turn it over to Pilate. They want to allow Rome to claim this death. They don't want to claim it, although they are making sure it occurs. There is Pilate. Pilate who's designated by Rome to simply keep the peace, to keep the oppressed peoples down, to make sure there are no issues and problems. And Pilate's concerned. At first, when he sees and hears what happened on Palm Sunday, he imagines this is their favorite son. This is the one they want to celebrate. He is deeply disturbed when he offers the release of Jesus and the crowd instead says, crucify him. Imagine the same crowd that declared, you are the son of God, you are the Messiah, Hosanna to the highest. That same crowd prompted by the priests, by the religious leaders, crucify him. Crucify him. And the scripture I read for you, Pilate is trying to wash his hands clean of this. This man declared he is the son of God. That's your religion, not mine. I have no problem with him. Well, he says he's the king. We have no king but Caesar. Surely this will convince you, Pilate. Pilate tried many times to release Jesus. Even when he places this placard over Jesus' head and says, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, it is the high priests again who say, no, 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 no. Don't put that sign. Just simply say he claimed to be this. And Pilate again, it is what it is, leave what I put over his head. When Jesus is on the cross, there are words that he shares with us. Those first words came from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He says other words. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. He is saying they have no idea who I am. Would it be different if they knew and understood who I am and why I've come? 
He says to one of the thieves who turns to him and begs for forgiveness, today you will be with me in paradise. It is a sign that John is making sure we know that when we prompt a response in ourselves or in others, Jesus, you are the Messiah. We too are invited into eternity. He says to John, behold your mother. Even on the cross, Jesus is considering the future of his family, his mother. He wants to ensure that she has someone to help. It is John, the beloved disciple. We know later that she dies in Ephesus, which is now Turkey. I've been there, the grave of Mother Mary. Mary was entrusted to John. John is the only disciple who is there. All the other disciples had run away, and Peter, even at a distance, denying, I don't know the man, I don't know him. That abandonment of your friends drifting away, hiding away. Jesus then says, I thirst. Now thirst is about his physical struggle. A thirst for water, refreshment. We know the water for us represents the baptism, the renewal. For him, it was that simple cup of water. And do you remember when he said in Matthew 25, even if you give that cup of water to the least of these, you've given it to me. I thirst. And he says, it is finished. Into your hands I commit my spirit. When Jesus declares it is finished, he is declaring that his obedience, that his act, that his salvation story is complete. He has done what he was born to do, to deliver truth, to reveal love, to offer sacrifice on our behalf that we might know forgiveness, healing, reconciliation. Many have often said, why is Good Friday good? It doesn't seem good. It's the day that we remember pain and suffering and a cross. Some in history have said it actually was called God's Friday first, before it was called Good Friday. God's Friday, God delivered his promise through his son, Jesus Christ. It is good for us that we can trust God's promise of deliverance. So as we think about Good Friday, we remember all of the worlds colliding and the greatest world of all is the one we're invited to. The eternal presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you will simply take the nail you were given and let me offer a prayer. O oh Lord, we cannot comprehend your great sacrifice, your love, and your life that paid all debts, debts for holiness, debts for justice, even debts that revealed your ultimate mercy. Help us, O oh God, to remember Jesus has paid it all in full, all and for all, once and for all. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Our song of reflection is Jesus Paid It All.
Let us pray. O Lord, most holy and gracious, as we come to you this Good Friday, God's Friday, may we open our hearts and our minds, our lives, to the presence and power of your deliverance, to understand the suffering of the cross, the indebtedness, for all is paid, for all humanity is given the gift of salvation, but we too must respond. We too must turn to you. O oh God, deliver us, we pray. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand for our closing hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Let us receive God's benediction and blessing. May the Lord of all creation, of all power and glory and majesty, who found himself in love hanging on a tree, come to you this day, rekindle in you the everlasting hope of his assurance, his pardon, his forgiveness, his eternal light that even on this dark, most dark day, it is God's day, and that God has delivered on his promise. Go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
and peace. Amen.